Hey, what's up there, YouTubers? It's me again, Brian, aka Gamer55551. And I am back with a video review. And this one's going to be a bit of a retro review as I take a look at the game Lost Odyssey, the game published by Microsoft and developed, I believe, by free plus if i'm saying the name correctly and miss walker on um, the xbox series s the game was originally released back on the xbox 360 back in 2008 and if you're interested in any gameplay footage i'll have a link down the script <coughs> excuse me in the description down below assuming you're watching this on youtube or you could click on the card that will appear up on this video though i had to reshoot the gameplay footage several times due to unfortunately a unexpected um power outage that happened out here the lights were like flicking on and off so it took several times to record some gameplay footage but anyway i have gameplay footage so you could check that out if you want to though when people hear the name um uh, miss walker most people will recognize it as this is the studio that was funded that was or should i say funded founded by the for the creator of the Final Fantasy series though. Um, now they have released several different games though. Some people have heard of say games like say Blue Dragon, um, The Last Story, a personal favorite of mine especially on the Wii though. But they've also released a game on the Xbox 360 known as Lost Odyssey and more recently though Fantasia that is released on the Apple Arcade. Now Lost Odyssey was a game that I thought it looked kind of interesting though, but back at the time when the game came out, I never had an Xbox system. I never had a 360 or anything like that. I had like a PS3 and so forth. So I never really got to try the game out though. It's only when I recently got the um, Xbox Series S, I decided to take a look at that along with other 360 JRPGs at the time. And this was one of the games I wanted to um, try out for a while though. And after investing several weeks with the game and all, I honestly will have to say for a JRPG on the that was originally released back on the Xbox 360, enjoying it on the Xbox Series S though, I will say it, is, it has certainly um, become a favorite of mine despite um, two minor quirks I have with the game though. So why don't we get started with the um, pros and cons and we'll start off first with the um, pros. And the first one I do want to say is um, story wise um, it looks it's actually good though. I mean the world of Lost Odyssey is very interesting indeed though especially with the story of Kayam, if I'm saying his name correctly, and Seth, though, and Immortals um, basically trying to recover their memories and so forth. So it, the whole world is just, like, interesting, in, which takes place during what looks like a magic revolution, in, revolution though, which is sort of a take on the whole industrial revolution and so forth, though. Um, the story may come off for some as sort of cliche for anybody who's played, like, a Final Fantasy game or anything like that, but that's not bothering me or anything like that. So from a story standpoint it's good the world of lost odyssey is very interesting very interesting indeed the next thing i do want to talk about is the voice acting and i will say the voice acting is done um very well in this game though um my favorite one is seth i love her attitude and so forth she definitely brings an interesting um it brings she, whoever does the voice acting for her did a really good job same with jason if i'm saying his name correct correctly though i he's sort of like the comical relief though i can see why people like him and so forth so the voice acting is done um very well um in the game though there are some cheesy lines here and there but nothing i thought was just nothing that i thought was terrible or anything like that so from a voice acting standpoint um it's done very well in this game and last but certainly not least i do want to talk about is the gameplay and i will say the gameplay follows sort of a old school jrpg approach you know leveling up um randomized battles although some people kind of agree with this approach others may disagree and some would prefer the approach you use like in today's rpgs where you see enemies on the screen not the randomized battles or, or anything like that but i'm okay with that though I, I don't mind the randomized battles or anything like that but what i did find interesting is the game does have a little bit at least from my view though a bit of a final fantasy x vibe to it and that certainly isn't necessarily a bad thing where you have the ability to switch out um equipment like your weapons or accessories um during battles though to fight certain enemies like an enemy might be fire you might want to use like an aqua uh, like you know attach like an aqua wing wing <coughs> aqua ring to your weapon to use a water bit water 
water attack on a fire enemy or anything like that. So it's a really neat idea that they borrow this approach. But what also makes it kind of interesting is that because characters like Calm, again, I apologize, I'm not saying his name correctly, and characters like, you know, Seth, um, Sarah, um, and so forth though because because of the because of those characters they have a different approach where you can like attach a certain accessory and they can learn the skill from that accessory and you won't need it like for example let's say there's an accessory that prevents your character from purifying if a enemy starts using like a purified spell to turn them into a stone or anything like that um, for the immortal characters Every time they complete, every time they take part in battles and win, though, they get basically what are SP points, though. And these um, SP points, though, um, some of them build up to like you need 10 SP points or 20 or 7, though they're different numbers and all. But once those SP points are filled up, you can assign that ability to the ca to the immortal character. They don't need the accessory anymore, which definitely comes in handy. So you could save it one for like the non-mortal character, like the non-immortal characters, like Jason, Cook, or Mac, and so forth, as well, leaving the abilities for the immortal characters though. So it's a really neat uh, mechanic that they add to it, and it definitely gives off a little bit of a Final Fantasy X vibe to the game, and that certainly isn't a bad thing, as I did enjoy um, Final Fantasy X um, indeed, though. Uh, one last thing I do want to talk about in terms of the game, though, is that the original game was basically four discs on the Xbox 360. Playing it on my Xbox Series S, though, once you conclude the first disc, though, it goes automatically to the second disc. This, I mean, automatically goes to the second part, though, so... Great. I mean, it was a little bit annoying probably back then for those who had it on the 360 with the four discs, though. I mean, it kind of reminds me of the days back in the early, like, PlayStation era for games like Final Fantasy VII or VIII or, like, Metal Gear Solid back then. But l luckily, once you're done with disc one, it goes straight over to disc two right away, even though the Xbox Series S is a disc system and all. So still a neat thing that, they, that the game does that. But either way... It's old school JRPG for though whether you love it or hate it though I certainly don't have a problem with it going into the old um, old school JRPG approach um, indeed. <clears throat> okay, uh, we're gonna take a quick break and when we get back we'll get to part two, which are the cons. So we'll take a little break and we will be right back. Okay, and we are back with part two of our video review of Lost Odyssey um, on the Xbox Series S. As I mentioned before, this game was originally released on the Xbox 360 back in 2008. So now that I gave you the pros, I, will, well, I wanna give you the cons though. And there are really only two cons that I could think of, at least as far as my time with the game Lost Odyssey. Uh, the first one you wanna talk about is the gameplay. Now, as I mentioned in the pros, I did enjoy the gameplay and I still do. It has the classic old school J JRPG approach. And as I mentioned, I, f I felt like the game had definitely had a Final Fantasy X vibe to it, though. So it certainly, for at least from my view, so it certainly isn't bad. That said, though, I did feel to some extent that there was a little bit of a learning curve with the game. And that is learning some of the mechanics in the game and so forth. In terms of the whole, you know, your mortal characters have to sort of like basically level up and all how they oh, not to say level up more like how they learn new skills and all that stuff some of it has to do is that in my view the tutorial isn't really that great or anything like it's like if you accidentally if you don't learn it though you might accidentally forget it like i did not know that you had the whole ring system of like holding down the um r trigger button to basically you know do the whole rings that basically when it gets to the to the ring part you let it go to be able to do do high damage or anything like that it took me to look up the internet and so forth so there isn't really like a tutorial in the game where you could relook at some stuff in case you forgot or anything anything like that it does so it does definitely add a little bit of a learning curve to the game though again it doesn't make the game um in it doesn't make the game uh, unplayable or anything like that. It doesn't mean that the game isn't enjoyable. It still is, at least in my view. 
but I will admit there is some sort of a learning curve into it, though. Also, while I did mention the game has a Final Fantasy X vibe to it, and I certainly don't think that's a bad thing, one thing you can't swap out, at least as, at least based on my time with the game, is that you can't swap out char different characters in during battles like you could in Final Fantasy X, which to me is sort of a bit of a disappointment, though, because I would have liked to see would have liked to see that feature added in, like with Final Fantasy. At, for Final Fantasy X, for example, let's say, for one example, you switch out L Lulu and bring in Yuma to basically heal the party and then pull her out and put Lulu back in to do like a like a magic damage to the enemy or anything like that. It would have been nice if they had added something like that in Lost Odyssey, though. But unfortunately, at least based on my time with the game, though, um, it's not um, there, though. So a little bit of a disappointment on that. But as I mentioned, there is a bit of a learning curve to the game. And last but not least, I do want to talk about is the visuals in the game. And I will say, as far as the visuals go, um, they're not, they're so-so. They're not terrible or anything like that. I'm fully aware this came out in 2008 compared to where visuals are today and all that stuff. So it's, I, I'm, I'm not saying that the game looks awful or anything like that though but it doesn't look 100 percent great either though i mean there are other 360 games that do look um slightly um, or ps3 games that look slightly better than what lost odyssey looks like though i mean the visuals to the game look something character designs and the visual of the game looks like it feels like it's something ripped out of like the ps2 era to be exact but like i said they're not terrible they're not awful or anything like that they're just it's just not great so that's why i think the visuals are like so so um in my book though Overall, I would say Lost Odyssey is still a very fun and it's sort of slowly becoming a personal favorite of mine on the Xbox Series S, though, and it is definitely an art JRPG I would recommend those to try out. For those who are fans of JRPGs, to be exact, um, the story and the world of Lost Odyssey is good. The voice acting is done very well. As I mentioned, there's some cheesy lines here and there, but nothing horrible or anything like that. And the gameplay is enjoyable. It's an old school JRPG. I'm aware not everyone is a fan of the whole random battles or anything like that, but I'm not bothered with that, though. And I definitely like how the game definitely, at least from my view, has a bit of a Final Fantasy X vibe to it, though. There is somewhat of a learning curve to the game, and that might turn some folks off, though. And the visuals are sort of a mixed bag. But like I said, they're not they're not horrible or anything like that. They're just not great or or anything like or anything like that. But either way, though, it's definitely a recommendation for especially for those who are big JRPG fans and all that stuff. It's definitely one to try out on your Xbox system, regardless of whether you have an Xbox One or an Xbox Series X or an Xbox Series S, though. It's a shame, however, we're not probably not going to get a remaster or a sequel because I remember hearing a story of how Miss Walker made a claim that they're not interested in doing that, doing a remaster or a sequel of their games. And while I understand that's their call and all that, but I think it's sort of a miss opportunity because it might. Why not remake a game that maybe there's with the system where the switch where the xbox series x and s is right now i think this would be an opportunity to reach out to an audience that may have missed out on it it's the same view i have with say the last story on the wii though i really think miss walker should remake the last story though because i think there's an opportunity there's an opportunity to reach out to an audience that may have missed out on the game when it originally came out in 2011 so i understand it's their call though but I will admit it is kind of a shame because I really think that a remake of Lost Odyssey would be nice. Or better yet, a sequel would also be good too. I mean, imagine if they had one where you have now Mac and Cook, now they're adults with maybe, and this might be a spoiler for those who haven't beaten the game, although I'm sure the game's been out for a long time. I'm sure a lot of people have seen videos on YouTube though. Um, maybe the child of both Jason and Ming um, maybe have like their adventures in it. In, Lost in a sequel for, like, Lost Odyssey, though. I mean, I think it would have been nice if they did that, though. A sequel or even a remaster. But it is what it is. So it is a little unfortunate that they're not doing a remaster or even a sequel. But 
Putting that aside though, Lost Odyssey is definitely a recommendation, especially for fans of JRPGs. And regardless of whether you have a Xbox One or an Xbox Series X or an Xbox Series S, so it's definitely worth um, for, definitely worth um, picking up if you have the chance, especially if you are a fan of JRPGs, especially during the possibly during the Xbox um, 360 um, era. <clears throat> Okay, um, this concludes my review of Lost Odyssey on the Xbox Series S. And again, these are my opinion. What are yours? What are your thoughts about Lost Odyssey, though? Do you think the game is a hidden gem or a cult hit or something like that or a niche game in any way? Did you remember playing the original Lost Odyssey when it came out on the Xbox 360 back in 2008? Did you enjoy it back then? Do you still enjoy the game um, today, though? Um, do you think it's unfortunate we're not going to get a remaster or a sequel to Lost Odyssey? Do you think they should do something um, like that? Do you agree with what I said in this video? Do you disagree? Do you have a difference of opinion? Um, as always, sound off in the comment section below. Let me know what you think, assuming you're watching this on YouTube. And I hope you hit the like button if you enjoyed this video. And if you do, make sure you hit the bell icon for notification of any new videos I put up though. And I hope you do subscribe to my YouTube channel. Also, feel free to share this video if you want to and feel free to Donate to my channel if you like. You could do it through PayPal me or Patreon. Links will be in the description of this video, assuming you're watching this on YouTube. And I will see you again next time when I do another video. Hopefully that will be soon. Until then, from Southern California, wish you all a good day then. Bye!